Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you lovely lot today? Well, over the years, I've had quite a few comments from people asking me to do some portraits. And I normally respond by putting it in my pink suggestion book and uh, quietly forgetting about it and hope that no one notices. Or I'll just simply say it's really not my thing. But I do think it's a really good idea now and again to really come out of your comfort zone and paint something you wouldn't normally paint. Because we all like to paint things that we're good at, but sometimes it's good to challenge yourself. So I'm really looking forward to it. Let's just see what happens. So we're going to have a go at this lovely little goat herder. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together with the use of this very interesting tool. Okay, so the first thing I did was a little bit of practice. Now, I hadn't really done much on the human face since college days, and I wanted to make sure I still remembered the basic principles of proportion. Now, this isn't a video on how to draw the face. There's a zillion brilliant videos on the subject here on YouTube, and some not so good, and some just darn right wrong. So, I'll list a few in the description below that I would recommend. So here is the photo ref that I used and I got this from Pixabay. Now I couldn't find the name of the photographer so if by some slim chance he happens to be watching, a big thank you. So what's really important when doing a portrait is you get your drawing right. And to be honest I think this was my third attempt. Now you can draw a tree and put a limb in the wrong place and no one will know. But with a portrait, you really can't put the nose in the wrong place without it being spotted. So I found using this proportional scale divider really useful. You can scale up or down, even really simple shapes. Just find the width, flip it over and mark the points. Now you still need to understand a little bit about perspective, but it can really help you with your proportions, especially if you're still learning. So when I was sketching this out from the start, I used it to check my measurements, like from his headdress to his sleeve, or the centre of his eyes, the length of his nose, the width of his mouth, and so on. Now, if you're interested in buying one, there is a link below in the description. Now, we're not sponsored, but we do get a small commission. Or, of course, you can always download the drawing template free of charge from my website. Today's materials, the paper I'm using is some Saunders Waterford. It's 100% cotton, 140 pound rough texture, and it's on a block, so it won't need stretching, but any decent watercolor paper will do. And my colors today are yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, French ultramarine, Payne's gray, and a little touch of alizarin crimson, also some white gouache, Four brushes from my range, three quarter inch flat, number 12 and number six round, and of course my trusty number three rigger. Off we go. And I'm going to start with the background first, wetting with clean water, and then dropping in various mixes of the French ultramarine, yellow ochre, and Payne's gray, all done wet in wet. And I'm going for a vignette style picture today, so I'm not going to be painting right up to the edges of the paper. Here I'm adding in a little touch of burnt umber. Now for his headdress. Now I know there's a proper name for it, but I just can't think of it at the moment. 
and I'm using a mix of French Ultramarine and Payne's Grey, nice and wet but leaving the top half unpainted. Then dropping in some yellow ochre into the wet wash. Next, part wetting his sleeve, then dropping in a mix of yellow ochre and burnt umber, but leaving lots of white highlights. And why not add in a touch of French Ultramarine? And I use a damp brush here to lift out some of the soft highlights. And when this is totally dried, I'm putting in a few further folds and creases with some watery Payne's Grey. And here some burnt umber. Okay, so here I want uh, more contrast and for his headdress to stand out a little more. So I'm re-wetting and coming back in with some much darker values using all the same colors. A little bit of splattering of course, but mostly into the wet get to get some nice soft texture. Payne's grey for his uh, crook, yeah, because it's my guess that he's a goat herder. And then just building up the contrast on this left hand side too. Next for his face, and I'm re-wetting the whole lot, including his beard. Now, you may have noticed I missed out a few steps here. Well, I blame Margot because she came into the studio to give me a cup of tea and I forgot to press the record button. So yeah, definitely her fault. So as a recap, I simply dropped in wet in wet a flesh mix of yellow ochre and alizarin crimson. and then by adding in some burnt sienna to darken the value. A 
I've also painted in some Payne's Grey and yellow ochre into his hair and beard. Now still wet, adding in the darker skin tone, making sure I leave that touch of light on the end of his nose. All the same colours on his hands, but a much lighter value along the top. Okay, so now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break and a lovely cup of tea. It's what they all drink, you know. Now for that really strong shadow. And this is that skin tone mix again with just a little burnt umber added in. Just making sure I keep that cheek area nice and light. and a very dark, more concentrated mix of the same colour dropped into the damp wash. Now it's tempting to think that the whites of his eyes would be white, but far from it when you look at the original photo. Here I'm just taking out some colour where his beard is. Now more shadow on the hands, but I don't want to add too much detail here as the focus of attention should be on his face. Now just beginning to build up the details and this is some Payne's Grey.
and here a touch of yellow ochre. Now some details on his clothing and I'm using a mix of burnt umber and Payne's grey, all done with my number 12 brush. Okay, now for his lips and this is mainly alizarin crimson with just a small touch of French ultramarine. The same brown mix for all these shadows and final details. Now this is the skin tone colour again with a touch more alizarin crimson dropped in. Back to the brown mix again and I'm now using my number six brush.
the eyeball is always the trickiest bit. With this eye, it's basically all in shadow, so you hardly see any of it at all. And the white of his eye is still a little light, so I'm just knocking it back slightly. Let's just add a nice stripey bit to his garment in some burnt umber. And perhaps a little more detail here in Payne's Grey. So we're nearly getting near the finishing stage and I'm just using a beige coloured pastel pencil to put in a few of these hairy details. and just bringing out the eye a little. And the final touches with some white gouache, thick and creamy, straight from the tube. Now I'm using my trusty rigger and a slightly more watery mix of the gouache for these little details on his hair. And the whiskers here.
Next, the softening and blending technique with a damp tissue. And there we go. I think we're done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Even if it's something you wouldn't normally paint, what's the worst can happen? And even if you make a total mess, it doesn't matter. You'll always learn something. So please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some more portraits and perhaps I won't put it off for quite so long. So, as always, please don't forget to like, <laughs> subscribe if you haven't already, it is free, leave a comment, I do read every single one, and of course I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. So, take care now everyone. <laughs>